Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel for part 2 of our G1000 series, coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers! Welcome back! In today's episode, we will go over all of the basics of the MFD portion of the G1000. For sake of time, anything that will be duplicate from the PFD portion, I will not be going over in this episode. If you missed part 1, I went over the structure of the G1000 series, as well as who it is geared towards. And lastly, I just have one disclaimer, I am not a pilot, so I will not be going over any procedures throughout the duration of this series. The aim of this series is to better help you understand the G1000 and all of its functions as well as how to implement those during flight. If you have any comments or questions today, post them down below in the comments and I'll get right back to you. And as always, if you enjoy today's content, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. The first soft key that we will look at is the engine soft key over here on the lower left hand side. So if we tick on that, we have a couple different options. Now in this particular mode, this can vary between aircraft. Especially if you have third party aircraft, it may give you some more options here in the engine portion. But we will not go over any of that today. We're gonna stick to the default aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. To the right of lean is the system button. So let's go ahead and press that. You will now see new system information populate on the lower left hand corner of the MFD. We now also have a couple other menus over here to the right. One is the reset fuel, the other is gallons remaining. Now this can be a little bit confusing as to what these are for, so let me go ahead and show you that real quick. Now the fuel totalizer portion is just to give you an idea of how much fuel is left, and this is all set based upon the pilot. So it's not an actual reading of the fuel that is in the aircraft. This is something that the pilot must set up before they take off. So now you may ask, well then, how do I use the fuel totalizer? For demonstration purpose today, I will fill up the fuel to 100%. As you'll notice, the remaining fuel did not change in the aircraft. If I go down to the reset fuel, this will reset the amount of fuel that has been used, as well as the remaining fuel that is in the aircraft. Now one thing to take note here is the fuel that it shows as remaining is not the actual fuel that we have in the aircraft. So you need to manually adjust this in the fuel totalizer. To do that, you need to come over to gallons remaining, add the amount of fuel that we need to equal what is actually in the aircraft. Now the goal here is to try to get this as close as possible. It doesn't look like I'll be able to get it exact. So at this point, we now have set our fuel totalizer. We can now go back. To the right of engine, we have our map options. If we tick on that, as you can see, we have a bunch of different options at the very bottom. Starting on the very left, we have the traffic button, and this is so we can turn on and off our traffic on our MFD display. To the right of that, we have the terrain, so we can show the topographical map. We can show the relative map. Now this is going to be relative to your aircraft. As we sit on the ground, you will take notice of all the terrain that is populated here on the screen. And all of that is in red because it is most likely higher than our altitude. So that's what relative is going to mean. If we switch it to off, it'll turn all the terrain off. And if we go back to topographical map, this will give us the actual topographic map for the region. And it has no bearing on how high we are in altitude. To the right of that, we have our Nextrad, and this will turn on and off the Nextrad weather overlay on the MFD. To the right of that, we have the Legend button, and this will give us the legend on the right-hand side so that you can see the absolute height of all of the terrain that is around us. Once we're finished here, we can hit the Back button. Over to the right, we have a Detail button, and this is where we can increase or decrease the amount of detail that is on our map. So if we tap it one time, it will go down to detail level 3, 2, and 1. To the right of that, we have the charts button. Now this is only going to be used if you have a Navigraph subscription. We will go over this menu in a future episode. So for now, we can hit the back button. And that takes care of all the soft keys on the bottom of the MFD. 
Now we're going to focus our attention to the FMS knob that is in the lower right hand corner. Unlike the FMS knob on the PFD side, on the MFD side we also have some other menus that we can switch between by using the outer FMS knob. So if we just roll to the right, we can then continue to scroll through each of the different menus. And as we're scrolling through these menus, you can see we have submenus within each of these main menu pages. So let's start off in the map menu and let's take a look at the IFR VFR charts. If we scroll down using the inner knob, it will now put us on the IFR VFR charts. We can now use the range knob over on the right hand side of the display to move around the map section. We can also roll on the knob to increase our zoom or decrease our zoom. You will also notice at the bottom of the MFD, we have a couple more soft key options that are available. We have IFR high, which is what's displayed here, IFR low, VFR, as well as the world map. We also have a follow button and this will follow our aircraft. So now let's move down to the next menu, which is the traffic menu. We'll use the inner knob to scroll down to the traffic menu. Once in this menu, you will see we have a couple more options that are available at the bottom of the MFD. The first one on the left hand side is our ADS-B button. What this stands for is Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. To the right of that, we can turn our traffic off or in standby mode, or we can set it to operation mode. To the right, we have a motion button. Now one thing to take notice of the aircraft that you see on the screen, now we can either show a relative direction based on our location, or we can use a absolute direction. To the right of that, we have a duration button. Now when I ticked absolute or even relative, you don't notice anything happen on the screen. So if we go over to duration, we can now set the amount of duration that we want to see from the aircraft. One other thing that I would quickly like to point out here, you'll notice that next to the aircraft we have an up arrow. That means the aircraft is ascending. At the back of the aircraft we can see it says plus 4546. Now in aviation, pretty much if you add two zeros to anything, you'll probably get the correct number. So if we add two zeros to this, that means that this aircraft is 4,700 feet above us and is still ascending. All the way to the right hand side, we have our altitude mode. This is what's going to determine when the aircraft are displayed on our screen. So we can have aircraft that are below us be displayed, above us displayed, normal, or we can have it unrestricted, so it will show any aircraft from ground all the way up. So that'll finish us up with the traffic menu, and now we can go down to our weather radar. Once on this menu, you will see that we have a couple other options at the very bottom of the screen. The first one we have here is mode, and if we tap on that, here's where we can turn on or off the weather radar. Turning it on standby, and then we can choose which weather we would like to see. Now that the weather radar is active, we can hit the back button here below. And now as you'll see, we have a couple more options that we can choose. So the weather radar is currently set up in a horizontal fashion. We can now switch into vertical mode and that will show us how high the storm is. Now we can also use the range knob over here on the right to increase or decrease our range for our weather radar. All the way over on the right hand side, we have a tilt button and this will show a tilt line of our aircraft. So if we are ascending or descending, we will know whether we will hit a weather pattern either above us or below us because this tilt line will increase or decrease. All right, so now that we're finished up in the weather radar submenu, keep in mind that if you want to get the navigation map back up, you must go and use the inner knob to scroll back up to your navigation map. So now we can use the outer FMS knob to scroll over to the next menu, which is the waypoint menu. And we're going to take a look at the airport information submenu. This menu will give us all of the airport information for our departure and arrival airport. Now we do have the ability to switch whatever we want to display here. To do this, we need to use our FMS knobs at the lower right hand corner of the MFD. 
If we press in on the inner knob, it will bring up a selector on our screen. We can now use the outer FMS knob to switch between what we want to change. Once we highlight a particular field that we wish to change, we can then use the inner scroll knob to start scrolling and change the individual selections. We also have the ability here to tap on the keyboard icon and then use our keyboard to enter the ICAO of the airport we wish to display. At the bottom of the airport information page, we have several new options available to us. On the left hand side, these three options, sync, chart options, and chart, all have to do with Navigraph and your Navigraph subscription. So if you do not have a Navigraph subscription, these options may not even populate on your screen. So we're not going to be going over these. The first option to the right is Info, and this will give us our general information for the airport that we have chosen here above. To the right of that is our Departures. This will display any departures that we have available to us. As you can see, we do not have any displayed. Next, we have Stars. Again, this will show us any of the arrivals that are available. Next over is our approach information for the airport. Now here you'll notice that we do have an approach listed here below, but that does not mean that this is the only approach available to us. To be able to scroll through the different approaches, we need to use our FMS knob to press in on the inner knob. Once we have it highlighted using the outer scroll knob, we can then use the inner scroll knob to select through the various approaches that are available. Once you find the one that you wish, you can hit the enter button. Now I believe if you are choosing an ILS or something, this may give you some ILS frequencies here below. But other than that, I don't really see anything that this does when you select the approach. The last soft key that we have at the bottom is our weather, and this will give us all of our METAR information for the airport that we have selected above. Again, use your FMS knob to scroll down, and use the outer knob to scroll through all the information. Another cool feature here is we can automatically switch frequencies as well. To do that, we would bring up the selector again and then scroll down to whatever frequency you want to enter either in your nav or your comm frequency. When you have that highlighted, we can hit the enter button. Now take notice of the comm frequencies here above when I hit enter. And then all we need to do is hit our swap button to swap that over to our active frequency. All right, so now we can move down to the next submenu of the waypoint menu, and that is the intersection information. This will give us information of a particular intersection. You can enter this information above by using the FMS knob or use your keyboard to enter that. All right, next down on the list is the NDB information. This will give us any information about a particular NDB. Next down on the list is our VOR information and this is going to be pretty much the same. So let's go ahead and try this out real quick for the airport in which we're sitting at. As you'll see, we'll have that displayed. Hit enter. Now it's also going to ask us which VOR we want to use because there are several around the world that use the exact save identifier. Now one thing that you could use to help figure out which one you need is by looking at the information at the very bottom. So as you can see, the first VOR is in Brazil. I know I'm not in Brazil, but you can see that we're 5,000 nautical miles away. So that is not the one I want. We'll use the outer FMS knob to scroll down one. And yep, that's the one we want. So now we just need to hit enter to select that. Now that we have selected that VOR, we also have the ability to automatically input the nav frequency in our standby. As you can see here that it is blinking highlighted below, to enter that all we need to do is hit the enter button and you will see the nav one frequency standby change. We can hit the swap button and now all that information should populate with the identifier right next to it. Before we can advance any farther, we need to remove the selector that is highlighting our frequency by tapping in on the inner FMS knob. Once in the auxiliary menu, we have some Navigraph settings, so if you're going to link your Navigraph to your G1000, the next menu down is our system setup. In this particular submenu, there are only a couple things that we can change. The fields in which we are able to change on this menu are highlighted in Cyan. To change any of these functions, we need to again press in on the inner FMS knob. It will populate our selector 
and then we can use the outer FMS knob to move that around. Once we have highlighted the field in which we want to adjust, we can then use the inner FMS knob to change to our desired setting. Once we have that highlighted, make sure to hit enter and you're all good to go. So now let's move over to the FPL menu, which is our flight plan. Now we could get to our flight plan one of two ways. We can either hit the FPL button down here on the right, or we can use the outer FMS knob to scroll over to our flight plan menu. You'll also see in the flight plan menu that we have a flight plan catalog. So this is where we can store multiple other flight plans in our G1000. I'm not too sure of how to store these as of yet, but I will look into that and hopefully I'll have that in a future episode. Now, as you can see, I do not have a flight plan entered and I will be going over this in part three of this series. We also have access to the menu button as well. In this menu, we have several different things that we can adjust or set, and these may change based on if you have a flight plan loaded or not, but this will give you an idea of what is available once we get into our flight planning portion. Once in the flight plan menu, we have a couple other options available to us at the bottom. Starting on the left, we have our VNAV profile button. Now, because we do not have a flight plan entered, there will be no VNAV profile on our display here. But this is how we can change that from the default three degree profile. If we tap on the VNAV profile button, it will highlight our VNAV profile. We can then use the inner FMS knob to select a different VNAV profile. Once we have that selected, we can then press in on the inner knob again, and now we have our new VNAV profile set. We can also cancel VNAV from here. This will disable the VNAV function of the aircraft. To re-enable, we can hit enable VNAV, and now we have it accessible again. To the right of that, we have VNAV Direct. The VNAV Direct 2 button will take you on a direct VNAV profile from your current location. All the way over on the right hand side, we have a chart button. And again, this is where we can access all of our Navigraph charts. The next menu we're going to take a look at is the nearest menu all the way on the end. And the first sub menu is the nearest airport menu. At the very top of the screen, you will see all of the nearest airports, starting with the closest airports first. We also have the ability to use the FMS knob on the bottom by pressing in. We can highlight any of these airports and then use the direct to button to take us on a direct to path to that airport. The other neat thing that this gives us is a lot of information about each of the airports that are around us. Once you have the airport highlighted, you will then see all the information for that airport listed here below. Also take note of the four additional menus that we have populated at the bottom of the screen. Starting on the very left, we have the airport soft key. And if we press on this, this will bring up the cursor in the airport section. To the right of this, we have a runway soft key. If we tap on that, it will bring the cursor down to the runway section of the information. If they have multiple runways, you will see these left and right arrows lit up in white so that you can scroll between them. The next soft key over is frequency. This will now populate the cursor down in the frequency section so that we can highlight any of the frequencies that are available, hit enter, and it will populate that frequency in your standby. The last soft key that we have is the approach, and if you press on that, it will now highlight any of the approaches that are available down in the approach section. To scroll through the different approaches, you will use your FMS knobs over here on the right. Now, because this is our only approach available, that's all that's going to be listed here below. Also take notice of the new soft key that we have here below that says load approach. But we're not going to go through loading any approaches today. That'll be in another video. The next menu down is the nearest intersections. Again, this is going to operate the same way. We can press in on the FMS knob, highlight an intersection that we want, and then take down the information. Once you're through here, make sure to press in on the FMS knob so that we can advance to the next menu, which is the nearest NDB. Again, these will all operate the same way, so I'm not going to go through each of these, 
but this will give us all the information that we need. Once we're finished in the nearest menu, you need to roll on the outer FMS knob to get back to our navigation map. This way we're able to use the menu button over here on the right so that we can adjust some more settings here. So as you'll see, the first thing that populates under the map settings is map settings. So if we hit enter, we can now scroll through and adjust some specific settings to our navigation map. So if you don't like heading up, you can change it to north up. Make sure that you hit enter. We also have the ability to change some other things down here below, but I just leave these on default. Once we're done, you can scroll all the way back to the top, use the inner FMS knob, and then we can scroll through other options that we have available that we can display on our navigation map. Again, we can scroll down, hit enter, and now we can go through each of the different menus. Once you're finished going through all the various menus and setting everything up for your liking, we then need to get out of this map setting menu. We can do that one of two ways. We can either press the clear button or press in on the inner FMS knob. I will go ahead and use the clear button. All right, everyone, that's going to finish this up for today's video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments and I'll get right back to you. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you would like to see part three of this series, click up here if it's available. Thanks for watching.